Um, thank you very much for having me, listening and staying late. It's, um, it's kind of the pressure to be the last talk of the day and almost the last talk of the, the conference. Uh, my name is Larson Omberg, and I'm a senior scientist at Sage BioNetworks. And um, I am going to talk to you mostly about reproducible science and collaborative science today. But I'm going to do that by talking about tools that we built at Sage and specifically how those tools were used in a very large collaboration of the Cancer Genome Atlas. Um, and I don't think I need to motivate, but I like to do that anyways because everybody's talking about reproducible science. And for me, an eye-opener was uh, reading a paper last year uh, that was a commentary in, in Nature where they talked about two studies that have been done to try to reproduce uh, scientific research. One of them was done at Amgen where they took 53 papers uh, and these were seminal papers, so lots of citations, uh, uh, drastically changing the, the landscape. And they tried to reproduce them. And they were only able to produce six of the findings of the 53 papers, which is terrible odds. Um, a similar study was done in, in, in Germany as well. They were able to reproduce 25% of the results. Now, I think it's important to note that not being able to rep reproduce the results doesn't mean that people are cheating. It just means that science is hard and a lot of times we don't have enough data to do it. And that's a problem that you can't really solve by, unless you get more data. But there's the other problem as well, being able to reproduce it so that we, uh, to know if someone did something wrong. And that is something we can solve with technical means. Um, so why do I care about this? Well, I care about it because I work at SAGE. And, uh, and I should probably say SAGE by networks because shortening it to SAGE just makes it very confusing at a Python com uh, conference. Uh, we're a nonprofit based in Seattle, and uh, we have as a broader goal to enable collaborations and uh, network, uh, network approaches to doing biology. And the end goal of this is always trying to bid, build better models of disease and helping patients. So we're totally focused on the idea of biomedicine. Uh, and one of the things that we do, uh, well, actually, I should say, the thing that we do most is probably changing the incentive structures for how uh, research is, uh, is incentivized. And the other part of it is also building uh, uh, platforms to enable bioinformatics commons. And by commons, I mean basically a resource where people can collaborate. It's not necessarily owned by anyone. The data inside is not owned by anyone. It can be used by everybody. And we're pretty small, we're about 30 people. We're looking to hire about another 10 uh, people. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end if there's time. One of the tools that we're building is Synapse. And um, why do we need Synapse? Uh, we've heard for several days here about other tools that uh, sort of solve the problem of reproducible science. Uh, outside of, of Python, Galaxy, if, if you're used to bioinformatics, is a great tool for uh, basically processing pipelines and getting results out of those pipelines. And you can publish those pipelines. Other people can rerun those pipelines. If you're an R user, you might be used to documenting your code using Knitter, which basically embeds the, the, uh, the executable code and the description of what you did in one location. Uh, yesterday, we heard about Dexy, which is a documenting, uh, documentation program for documenting code. And of course, everybody here has used IPython. All of these solve parts of the problem. They definitely solve the problem. I am a one single researcher. I'm doing my, uh, my work. I document it very well. But it doesn't solve the problem. I'm collaborating with five other researchers, and I want to be able to make sure that what I am taking as input is the same thing that everybody else takes. And my output, I now want to share with someone else. We need something to take care of that. And Synapse does part of that. And I'm going to talk about how Synapse does it in the context of the Cancer Genome Atlas. So what is the Cancer Genome Atlas? Um, it's probably one of the largest genomics or omics studies that, uh, that has been con conducted. Um, it's the idea of trying to find a, a complete variation that exists within cancer. And so instead of just focusing on one aspect of cancer, they focus on the whole process all the way from mutations, doing whole genome sequencing and exome sequencing uh, on, the, on the genome, looking at copy number variations, so duplications in the genome that occurred in cancer, looking at methylation, which has methods of controlling which genes are getting turned on and off, looking at expression of the actual genes into mRNA, and then also how those are, are regulated by microRNAs in, in, for the process of converting them to proteins, and then finally also protein expression. So they're looking over seven, seven different, or six different platforms, and then on top of that, clinical data as well. The cool thing is they're doing it for 10,000 patients. 
Uh, and they're doing it across 24 different cancers. And the idea behind it is basically, can we find out what is it that certain cancers do that other cancers, uh, 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 other cancers do and others don't? Uh, are there similarities be between some cancers that might make one cancer that, we are, that is currently druggable such as uh, HER2 positive breast cancer, can we find something similar in another cancer, say ovarian cancer, that we might be able to treat the same way? It turns out it actually is true. Um, and one of the projects for doing this is the pan cancer analysis. So pan cancer, what they're doing is they're looking at 12 different cancers simultaneously and trying to do a comparison and contrast across those 12 cancers. And this is a project that's been going on for about a year and the one that we've been mostly active, active in. We're involved in a few of the other analysis pro projects as well, but this is the main one. Uh, and this is a pretty large collaboration. It consists of 147 researchers spread across 28 different institutions, all working from 1,000 different data sets. And by a data set, I mean um, a few hundred patients and anywhere from 500 uh, features up to a million features. And so 1,000 times that. They have generated over 1,700 pieces of results. So this could be gene lists, this could be clustering results, this might be normalizations of the things. But this is also uh, stuff that will go into downstream analysis beyond the actual the raw data. And so far, as of last week, 22 papers have been submitted. And there are another several going in in the next few weeks. And all in all, 68 abstracts were written. So, uh, and that's in about a year's worth of work. Um, and of course, when you have something this complicated, you have a, an issue with being able to coordinate all of the different pieces. So raw data comes in from multiple locations. You have the, the data coordinating say, uh, center. You have data coming in from the broad fire hose. You have individual working groups, et cetera. All of this data needs to be collated in one location. And the data is constantly being updated. So you have to keep track of versions. And some data is updated more often than others. So you have to keep track of collections of versions of files or freezes of those. And then th all this data is being pulled out by, um, by individual researchers for, uh, for projects, the 68 projects that were initially the, uh, written ab abstracts for. And then those are in turn generating output. But th that output doesn't st is not only output, it actually goes right back into the analysis. The there's dependencies where the output of one group, which has an, an algorithm, needs to be used as an input to a to second algorithm. And then hopefully at the end there will be papers published. And really, if you try to describe it, it becomes a hairball of the dependencies between everything. And so you need a way of uh, uh, tracking that dependencies. And that's sort of the way why PanCancer uh, approached us, is they wanted to use a, a synapse to do that uh, part. And so roughly speaking, what the, what the model of what happens is, is you have the, the 28 different institutions. Most, uh, a few of those are generating data. Data is being uh, generated, pushed up into synapse. And then each of the collaborators can pull data out of the, out of, uh, out of there, and, um, and by having freezes, you can basically have everybody working off the same data set, or so you can have two results of two different algorithms being directly comparable. But then the cool thing is actually the results that are done from this analysis is actually being pushed back into Synapse. And so we have things like um, uh, clustering re results, models based on, on uh, machine learning, um, uh, or uh, just uh, um, clinicians making decisions that this is something that, that is important, which would then be uh, pushed back into Synapse. And then for a subtype of these, these where we have a known what, uh, what the type is of a specific type, we actually have automatic evaluations of those. And so, for example, a lot of groups ended up implementing clustering on their favorite data set and also their favorite methodologies. All of them are basically the same, same type of uh, data as a result. Synapse would then find those pieces that were the same and then run sta standard statistics for, for enrichment of those. So everybody was compared on the same, uh, on the same premise and then also cross comparison between these. Um, so what is Synapse? Well, Synapse is a, is a, is a, um, is a web framework um, that um, the motivation, actually I should say what the what mo motivation of it is, you can't make scientists change the way they work. So the idea was just keep synapse out of the way. So a scientist or a computational scientist works in their own tools however they want. And they run it wherever they want, on their own cluster or their own laptop or whatever. And then what they do is they communicate with synapse and register when they've done changes. Very much the same way you would do in, if you're working with Git and GitHub, for example. Um, and then you have the possibility of sharing this as well. So you can keep things private, you can share it afterwards. 
Um, and just let's just get some Python code out of the way because this is a Python conference after all. So uh, the way you would interact with it, for example, you could log in, you, you, you create an instance of Synapse, which is a, is a conduit to communicate with the backend. It's all based on REST, uh, REST APIs. Uh, you log in, and then if I want to get all the data that's involved in the TCGA with a certain freeze, I can run queries, and these queries are basically SQL queries uh, that don't allow unions. And so for this, uh, I'm selecting the name of all the stuff that's in Synapse where it belongs to the TCGA pan cancer freeze version four, and the file type is of math. And file type of math is a mutation annotation format file. And what I get back is basically a list of the 20 files that are available of that format. And then if I want to find out, I can just get that file. I get an accession, back, accession ID back, which is a SYN, SYN ID. I can just, just then use SYN get, and I, I download that. And what happens then is I download data, and I also download metadata. So here's a, a printout of some of the metadata. So it's kind of small, but you can see this is some, something created by someone called Kyle Elrott. It was created in, uh, in September of 2012. The disease is cancer, and then there's a lot more metadata down there. And then you can query, that's the kind of stuff you can query on. Um, and actually, I think the best way to show how this actually works is, so this is some, uh, some results that have been uploaded by a collaborator. So this is actually someone else. This is by Syriac, Syriac Handoth, who is at uh, University of Washington in St. Louis. No, Washington University in St. Louis. Um, and this is, um, uh, you can see that this is version two of this. So he, uh, information about the different versions that have been uploaded all accessible by the same ID or, or a permanent uh, DUI. Here's a preview of what the information is. Here's some description of what, what actually was done. Uh, but then most, uh, most importantly is the idea of provenance. So if I look down here, I can see that the file that I'm looking at is actually a comparison uh, of MUTESIG and MUSIC, which are two different uh, mutation calling algorithms. And the MUSIC data was derived from running music that took these following input parameters, and then that was further uh, 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 data that was uh, filtered, uh, lift over, and deduplicated, and re-annotated, et cetera, and I can backtrack basically, and each one of these is another entity, so I can go to that entity and then get information and download that. So I have the pro whole provenance record of where this data came from. And if we look at another example, so this is a, uh, this is a model of, um, of survival, and um, um, actually this is the model of survival. Uh, so these are the results of a, uh, of a prediction, and again, I can look at the provenance graph, and, if, and for this one, for example, I actually have the model, so if I click on this, I actually get a, something that is a Cox uh, uh, model on kidney cancer using microRNA and clinical data, and this, I know this because I looked at it already. That, that zip file right there actually contains all the R functions that were run to, uh, to do this analysis. And so because of all the data in the same format, I can now download this, change the accession number from the microRNA data to the copy number data, for example, rerun this model doing it on copy number instead of uh, a microarray. Um, so that's, that's the kind of things you can do. Um, I went through this. Um, another part that we were doing, I'm shifting a little bit focus, this is something we used in the TCGA uh, collaboration, and that's the idea of avoiding the self-assessment trap. If you look at the way most, most of the research is done when you're talking about machine learning and, uh, uh, and you're trying to develop methodologies, is that you have a researcher, they use data, they build a model on the data, and then they assess the, uh, how well their model does, and then once they have something that, they, uh, that does well, they send it out to review and hopefully it gets published. Now, of course, everybody does the exact same thing, and if you look at everybody's paper, everybody's paper has the best method. And the reason for that is because everybody's assessing themselves. So what we need to do is, by moving, moving the assessment out from the researcher into a centralized location, you can actually have everybody compared on the exact same methodologies. And this is something we're pushing hard at Sage and the idea of running challenges where we provide the data, we provide what the goal is, and everybody submits, uh, submits their methodologies. They have to submit source code, they have to submit the, the actual result. You get a real-time leaderboard and you have a competition. And 
currently we're running three of these. So we partnered in, in, in February with Dream. So Dream is now running their challenges inside, inside, inside Synapse. And so we have three of these. So if anyone is into machine learning or uh, this is something, it's, there's both glory and fame in this. The top one right there, the winner, because it's being verified in an external methodology, will be, uh, uh, get to publish in PLOS Comp Bio. And the bottom right there has $50,000 in cash prices. Um, and then I would like to end with uh, just thanking everybody who's been part of this project. It's lots of people both at Sage, at our collaborators, the, uh, the TCGA. Um, we're currently hiring, we, uh, we have four postdocs, uh, three postdocs, four science, senior scientist positions open. And yes, Seattle really is that beautiful. Thank you very much.